Our gang stat 1150. Uh, before I dive into demonstrating the types of problems that you're going to be working on my stat lab for uh, your exams and your homework uh, and your grade, uh, I want to kind of ad lib one. Uh, so just run through a, a problem that uh, I think is kind of interesting and um, uh, just review some of the some of the content uh, that I just uh, presented to you in the previous video. Easy for you to say. I don't know why I'm stuttering around like uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. So if we go to Stack Crunch website, you'll see there's uh, a link that takes us to other data sets. Now these data sets aren't um, uh, connected to your textbook, but these are data sets that people have uploaded. I always thought about doing one just uh, for the heck of it. And there is one, there's some interesting things here. Uh, uh, Major League players elected i think that would be interesting car details i think would be interesting some people superheroes uh, professor salaries would really be interesting uh to me but there is one on college data and i thought it was on page two but maybe it's yeah here we go uh sample college data so if you will click that a uh, pretty cool data set, actually a pretty large data set. I think there's about 300 schools. Uh, scrap that. There's 197 schools. But there's all kinds of cool stuff there that uh, we could analyze about, uh, uh, you know, quantitative, well, a few categorical variables. But a lot of quantitative data here that would be appropriate for examining using this correlation and regression tool that uh, I'm attempting to teach you. So... <clears throat> when I look through here, one of the things that I think uh, most interesting, and let me pump the brakes a little bit and tell you what, I, I really find this interesting, is because both of my daughters are 18, uh, 35 days difference in their ages. They're both adopted from China. So no uh, no craziness going on there. Uh, meaning that how would I have two kids who are 35 days difference in ages? Uh, otherwise, but uh, they're both applying for college, and they're 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 really smart, and they just uh, excel academically. So they are applying at some uh, pretty prestigious and expensive colleges. So one of the things that I kind of have on my radar is, uh, first of all, uh, the um, let's see the uh, tuition and fees and the retention rate. So is there any relationship between the amount that you pay to go to college there and the percentage of students who are retained? Now, the very first thing you have to do is you have to decide, well, which is my X and which is my Y? Uh, because you are predicting Y from X, X either needs to come at the same time as Y or it needs to come before why. For example, what if I'm predicting someone's height from their weight? Well, that would be a reasonable question of predicting someone's weight from their height, right? Because both of those measurements uh, can be taken at the same time. However, uh, people pay their tuition when they enter into college, and then the retention rate uh, is uh, uh, determined later. So for that reason, I think tuition rate would definitely be my independent variable, my X, and, re, uh, I'm sorry, tuition and fees would be my independent variable, my explanatory variable, my predictor variable, uh, and retention rate would be the Y uh, or the dependent variable. So the very first thing I would want to look at uh, is look at a picture. Let me find it. Should we scatter plot? And my X, again, is tuition and fees. And my Y is retention rate. Not going to worry about any of the rest of this stuff uh, right now. So very, very, very quickly, back in the old days, I understand they had to uh, perform these, uh, create these things by hand. Uh, today, we can get uh, a scatter plot of what, almost 200 uh, people in a split second. Now, <clears throat> when you get something like this, what should you think? First of all, do we have a linear relationship or not? Secondly, is it positive, negative? Uh, third, is it strong, weak, or moderate? Let me repeat that. Do we have a linear relationship? If we do, is it positive or negative? Second, do we have a strong, weak, or moderate relationship? 
Well, as I draw a line through here, <clears throat> I try to visualize a line that best fits this data. I see a positive slope. Now, do I see a linear relationship? Um, sort of. Yeah, I think a linear model is reasonable for describing this uh, uh, data set. But again, that there's a lot more, uh, much of a prescriptive approach. But right now we're just learning, right? We're just uh, in the initial stages. So we're just kind of eyeballing to see if we think a linear model. So right now it's say, yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, positive or negative, well, that's clearly positive because we have an increasing uh, pattern to the right. Uh, strong, weak, or moderate, definitely not strong. Uh, there's a lot of variation over that, uh, around that line that I visualize. So I'm saying it's probably uh, somewhere around a weak to moderate relationship. All right. Now let's dive into the weeds. Let's go to stat. Come down to regression, go to simple linear regression, and now we'll run the diagnostics. Tuition and fee is my X, so I'm predicting my Y, which are retention rates. Now, for the time being, all this, uh, you know, where and group by, don't worry about that stuff. The, the, the hypothesis testing and confidence interval, I'll teach you that in uh, lesson uh, seven. Uh, graphs, there are some graphs here that take all the guesswork out of whether or not a linear model is appropriate. Uh, but I do want to say the predicted values. All right, because remember, the, one of the purposes of uh, <clears throat> the regression model is to make predictions. Now, when I hit compute, I get a couple of things. First of all, I get my output. I'll explain all that to you in just a second. And the next thing I get is if I get my scatter plot with the regression model uh, drawn over it. So again, we made uh, some pretty good guesses. Linear, eh, yeah, sort of, not bad. Um, positive, absolutely. Uh, relationship, um, I don't know, weak to moderate uh, at best. Now, when I come back to this, let me uh, make this a little larger so uh, we can see it. I can highlight some things. First of all, my dependent variable, my Y, is retention rate. I always double check these and make sure you didn't get them reversed. If you get them reversed, you get the wrong answer uh, and you miss, um, uh, miss the question. The next thing you're given is you're given your regression model. So when I see this, I see this as Y hat, which again is the predicted retention rate, can be found by taking 68.99 plus 0 0.00038 times the tuition and fees times our X. Sample size is 197. Our correlation coefficient is 0.41. R squared, I'll teach you this in a later video. Now, the analysis of variance table, uh, I'll teach you this in lesson seven. All this standard error, alternative degrees of freedom, test statistic p-values, I'll teach you all that in lesson seven. But for now, let's just look at the estimate. The estimate of the intercept is 68.99. Look familiar? And the estimate of the slope is 0 0.00038. Look familiar? Yeah, it's right up here. So you get your intercept. And you get your slope in two different places. Now, it's going to be pretty wacky if those numbers are different. They're not going to be different. Uh, but if they are, you know, hey, give me a call because we've got something going on. Uh, really wacky. They're not going to be different, so don't uh, don't sweat that one. Now we have some predicted values, right? So if I was to put in each of these x values into my model, so for the very first one, I have thirty three thousand nine ninety. If I was to put thirty three thousand nine ninety in here, multiply by point zero 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 three seven six and so on, and then add sixty eight point nine eight nine, you know, so on, uh, my predicted value 
you can see that there's been, uh, just let me bring this down. This predicted value, see there's a new column that's been added because I clicked that predicted value box, is 81.9 or 81.795, so about 81.8. And notice there's a difference in what we observed the retention rate to be, 74, and what our model predicted the retention rate to be. Differences of about, uh, what, eight percentage points? These are percentages. 74% of the students retained, 67, 87%. Well, the difference, and again, don't sweat it too much right now, but this will be a, uh, uh, a focus in a future video. The difference on the, uh, the Y that we observe in our data set and the Y that our model predicts has a name. It's called the residual. So the residual is the difference between the observed Y and the predicted Y. In, in notation, the residual is equal to Y minus Y hat. Because remember in the previous video, we introduced the variable Y hat as the predicted value for y. Again, it all comes comes full circle to what is the primary reason of a, uh, or I'm sorry, what's the primary goal of constructing a regression equation? It's twofold, right? To better explain the relationship between x and y and to make predictions. I'm going to repeat that. To better explain the relationship between x and y and to make predictions. So this component right here, namely that column, is the part making the prediction. Better explaining the relationship between retention rate and tuition and fees is explained by the slope and the intercept. So what would be the interpretation of the intercept? For a tuition and fee equal to zero, the predicted retention rate is 68.99. Yeah, that, that doesn't make sense because a tuition and fee of zero uh, the university wouldn't exist. And a lot of times your, uh, um, your, your intercept doesn't make contextual sense. What is the interpretation of the slope? As tuition and fees increase $1, the predicted retention rate increases 0 0.00038, let's call it. All right, I could go on and on. I could teach on regression for the next probably six months and, and just never stop talking. And uh, But that, that would be boring for you. So uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to end this. There's, there's so many other things I could tell you, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put those in a future video. All right, take care.